Hi guys, this video will be the start of my uh, series of integrating authentication uh, features like email, phone, Google sign in or Apple sign in inside your React Native application, right? Uh, with the help of Firebase. So, uh, for the next four videos, I will be explaining how you can implement Google sign in and Apple sign in in both Bare React Native and then in um, like Expo powered React Native projects. Okay. The thing is, I didn't thought of uh, making this part didn't think of making this particular video but uh, the setup of firebase should be a uh, video itself because the integrating of the google sign in apple sign in will be a much bigger video so i have dedicated this particular video to explain what what is authentication and how you can uh, uh, implement all the stuff inside your react native application i'll also be discussing how what are the different uh, types of uh, services available other than firebase which you can use that in, in your uh, future applications, right? So let's get started. So now here uh, in uh, in Firebase, uh, like in React Native Firebase, we have two versions. One is the older version, which is 21.14.0, which has something like a backend uh, or a Node SDK style with uh, what I would say, um, doc dot collection collection dot doc dot uh, delete or get something like that. But the latest version is 22.4.0, which is the web style where we have dog, get dogs, and then something like that, uh, where uh, it would be more uh, more aligned to web developers. I personally like this, but um, the thing is, like, the latest version is with the, what is it, 222.4.0 is with the web style. So I'll be moving with that, but I will also give insights on how you can do with the older version because I personally like it. Right. Now, this would be four-part video uh, where I will be discussing how you can do the Google Auth and the Apple Auth in Bear and Expo and Bear and Expo. Uh, in later upcoming months, I will be explaining how you can do the phone auth and the email auth authentication inside your React Native application and all the best practices. Right? But before jumping straight into the concepts, um, I want to uh, discuss about the alternatives. Right? So I have been working with Firebase for the past six years, which is like, I think, a big lifetime for my young age but still uh, what i believe is i per i am personally uh, planning to switch to services like better auth which i believe is extremely good uh, or auth zero but they are costly that is the uh, only problem like they are costly at scale or aws cognito or stitch stitch is being used by multiple uh, uh, ai based applications for easier so2 compliance etc because you need proper audit trails etc which it doesn't come out of the box in firebase so for example, if you are going to make a big uh, enterprise application with B2B, B2B, uh, B2C and B2B2C right, and all those stuff where organizations, teams and all those things come plus audit trials and so many things come into play. Firebase also has that with Connect ID, Open Connect ID with SSO, SAML and all these stuff. But the thing is, it costs you uh, an arm and length to implement all those things. But if you go with better auth and then if you already know some of the best practices, it's good to go. Right. But what I have planned is I have planned to make all the authentication, um, uh, like to implement all the authentication services available in in the market with React Native with uh, Expo based uh, projects, right? But for now, I'm going to start this series with Firebase, which is like is more than enough for any MVP applications. All the um, authentication services offer export and import of authenticated users. Like for example, if you have ten thousand users. 10k users you can literally um, uh, like export all the users from a uh, firebase authentication to some other right you, you can do it with hashing and like bigquery etc right okay so before uh, jumping straight into this so i will show you some links right so this there is a superb website called uh, sasprices.net.slash i will provide it in the description you can see what will be the cost to uh, scale your uh, authenticated users right so until 5,000 users, uh, most of them are free except super tokens and stack out, etc. But you can see R0, so $175. If for indie developers, then I uh, can see you'll get bankrupt. Okay. But the thing is, let's let's go to uh, under 1,000. Uh, it's 10,000. Okay. Or 50,000 users, right? If you scroll down, uh, you can see so Superbase is $25. They can make uh, manage it. Work, work OS is for enterprise-based applications. Clerk, $825. Stitch. $2,000 stitch and uh, sorry, auth zero, $2,000. Okay. If you are able to afford it, then it's a fine. It's fine, right? But if you scale up, then I uh, will see. So uh, that's that's what I'm saying, right? But if you want more control, use better. But 
uh, i wanted to discuss all these things because other youtubers don't uh, in, uh, show all these things before jumping into their so i want to show this because when i started learning 6 years back no one showed the all these things to me because other thing is i couldn't i was i wouldn't be able to understand that at that time but now i have to because uh, we are i myself i am working on multiple applications and pricing is must right so yeah, like uh, for example if you crack open 10000 users per day and then your uh, cloud cost the skyrocket it wouldn't work properly right like um, uh, it would come on you right so uh, that's what like you, you have to uh, go through all these things the best part is for our zero super base and all these uh, service providers there is a expo react native provider so i will be making all those things in the upcoming months like uh, like how i did with geoverse i'll be making an authentication playlist on how to implement multiple services with best practices in react native right this one and then the last one is this particular guy okay so here uh, i can see 10k monthly active users what is the amount of cost to do it right cognito a uh, cognito increase their prices one more super base right so the main thing is r0 is for enterprises so for enterprises you have what is so saml and all these things as so is like a single sign on saml like is a markup language uh, for what sing, some some uh, abbreviation for that right for what big enterprise application so you have to know all these things if you want to work with big folks that's why i am mentioning these things uh, firebase also has open id connect but uh, no, I, so i just wanted to show this yeah so now let's uh, let let's dive into the real work uh, before diving just see through all these links of what i have mentioned it would save you in the long run okay if you don't see this authentication is a must for any application okay because when someone wants to join with email and they also want to link with like if you want to link with multi factor authentication mfa or you want to change their email or if you want to do all the crud stuff like creating reading updating deleting with email phone number and google sign in social sign in and connecting multiple providers together for a single email and phone number you should take care of everything before starting anything okay so that's why i have mentioned all these things uh, but under the hood what i understood is authentication is not a bad black box that's what i always believe authentication is not a black box it's very straight forward yeah, there will be just a hashing and then uh, like uh, the, the password protection plus salting and all those things the back end but for scale like you have to make it rock solid if you keep the fundamentals stronger just like how any other back end services like databases uh, caching and all those things authentication is the same you have to treat it just like that don't go skip it okay just don't skip it and uh, provide everything to other providers just uh, normal like uh, okay like for now firebase is the best for 10k users right after that it's up to you on how you manage all those okay now let's get started here i will uh, i already have two applications uh, created with both uh, like rebar react native and expo react native right so for uh, expo react native i'll show you how we can move forward with that right so for uh, firebase you can use the uh, firebase js sdk with expo go right but the thing is i am never going to make any videos with expo go because that is not viable for enterprise application as said by themselves like expo themselves they said it's just for prototyping and uh, moving forward with their ideas so for expo go you can go and install this right but the thing is if you want like if you see if you have used with expo sorry firebase with nexus or any web based application this would feel very similar very uh, familiar right but it won't work now you have to you what you can see um there is there uh, you have to use the react native firebase sdk not this one right i'm going to use that only right you can see uh, you, okay uh, provides access to native code by wrapping the native sdks for android and ios into a javascript api each fiber service is available as a module that can be added as dependencies okay here what hap what happens is using firebase js sdk okay uh, if i go down uh, it's a javascript library that allows you to interact with firebase services in your app when to use want to use a, okay want to want to quick start with firebase services caveats firebase js sdk does not support all devices all services of mobile apps some of them are, uh, what is like services and analytics uh, dynamic links and statistics see this section okay if i go here so with this we will have access to almost everything okay everything like authentication etc and then it works exceptionally well okay so now what i have to do so the first thing i have to do is i have to uh, for expo projects i am going inside that particular project of 
CD, Runix, Export. Okay. And then I'm installing it. Export dev client. And the next one is, I am installing this particular library. Okay. I'm installing it. And then uh, go to the command prompt and add this and tap on enter. Okay. The next thing you have to do is, at this point, you must follow as it, uh, follow this documentation as it covers all these steps. Okay. So I'll go here. Now, I scroll down. Installation for Expo projects. You can see integration with Expo is possible when using a development build. You can configure a work, uh, project via config plugins, which is nothing but app.json, or manually configure the product yourself, the bare workflow. Bare workflow is what? Uh, the um, like the bare React Native flow, right? React Native Firebase cannot be used with the compiled Expo Go app because React Native uses uh, Firebase is a native code. So that you have to understand. Now I'll scroll down. So install React Native Firebase modules. So what I have to do, I have to copy this and then I have to paste it here and then I, I like no, install that. Now configure React Native Firebase modules. So what I have to do is to enable e enable uh, enable Firebase on native and Android and iOS platforms. Create and download service account files for each platform. Then provide the password download uh, to password download at Google services and uh, Google service info playlist. Okay. Files in the following, uh, like, and then add it as a uh, add it in the uh, in, in this uh, key key value pair. Okay, now I will show you one by one. Okay, what I have to do? Go to Firebase and then create. I'll show you right for Expo Brush. Expo or it's it's the same for any application Android or iOS. But here I'm going to tap on this. Uh, tap on this, and first I'm going to create an Android app. So I'm going to create an app called what is this? Uh, okay com.runix expo once i do that okay runix expo one okay something like that and then once i do all these things i can i will get a um you can download the file you can download the json file the same for is you can uh, add the bundle id okay bundle id and then you can uh, register the app and download uh, download the config file you will get two files one is what i'll go here one is what Google services.json and info.ps. You will get these two things by creating uh, two apps. One is iOS and Android. Okay. And then what they are saying is add it somewhere in the root file. The next step go to app.json, scroll to the top. Here, you already, what you have to do is you have to add the, like, like use the Google services file and then the path. The same way, uh, you have to. Add the package. The package name is Runix Expo. The same for iOS. You have to link with that, and then you have to what? Uh, uh, link with that bundle identifier. Okay, same the same as mostly use the same, uh, but uh, like package name and bundle identifier. Okay. Once you have done that, scroll down. Here you can see plugins. In the plugins, copy these. Okay, copy this and then paste it here. Okay. Also add class analytics if you want. Next step: Expo build properties. Okay. Now. I will, I will uh, uh, copy and paste. Here is the Expo build property. So what you have to do, you have to copy this and then you have to paste it here. Okay, that you have to do. And the next step you have to do is, you also have to use this, uh, use modular headers true. Okay, they didn't add this. Okay, you have to add this. Okay, so once you have added it, now what you have to do is, run, you can see local app compilation. Okay, local app compilation. If you want to do that in cloud, use, EAS build. Here, generate a native file, expo pre build. Now, if you have already installed Expo after doing build, okay, here, I'll do what? NPM, NPX expo pre build. So it will automatically add all those things there. Now I will go to where expo Android app. You can see Google services just JSON is automatically being injected there. So if I delete this, okay, I delete this and then if I go here, add that here, okay. You see, it is automatically being added there. That's the power of Expo config files. Okay. Everything is now set up. All the, uh, uh, like, you know, Expo stuff is now set up. This is how you have to set up in the Expo site. Now, the same for bare React Native Flow. Okay. So, bare React Native Flow, uh, flow create two files called, uh, two files for that, iOS and then Android. Okay. Create that and keep it aside. And then now, this is where Expo has won over me, myself, right? There is no need to go anywhere. You can directly uh, use here. Right? First thing you have to do uh, is go into your project folder. 
bar react native folder and then install this command first okay once you have installed it what you have to do is generate android credentials and all these things right so i'll scroll down here first add the google services plugin in the android build.gradle okay so what i will do i will copy this and then i will go into the bar react native folder android app uh, what is this uh so sorry i think yeah here build.gradle not here um here here okay so here android build.gradle okay android build.gradle and then i have to add it here so number one the next one i have to do is i have to drag and drop the google services.json in app folder number two okay and then the last step is i have to copy this and then i have to go to app grade build dot gradle and the top i have to add it here okay three steps the thing is these three steps are, are automatically added in runix uh, sorry in the expo files okay that's the power of expo right they automatically do all this stuff for us so that we can focus on the product the next step for bar react native flow ios is download the google services info.plist here comes the tough part why because you have to open up xcode okay and then i'll go um okay i'll go where here and then in the ios uh, okay here i'll copy this and put it somewhere okay so this is the tough part okay you have to um, go to first that folder wherever your service.info.plist is there and in the xcode open up your app open up your app this is your app oh, i'm opening it up and then you have to drag and drop it right here okay you have to go here runix you have to drag and drop it here and then you have to tap on finish then only it will get added okay that's how you configure ios side and the last step is in if you are using 77 which you should right go to runix apps delegate dot shift and then at the top import firebase and then in the application go and import this okay go and import uh, go and add it here okay once you do this just run in pm uh, once you did all these things for uh, what is this like for the bad react native flow you have to go in cd ios and then pod install everything will be installed and then um, firebase will be completely configured for both your ios and uh, now for your uh, bad react native and then expo application right for this one uh, what is this like for bad react native flow this one is uh, not been mentioned anywhere in the internet but i found a way here you have to copy and paste this command pod nano pb uh, modular headers is to true or else it won't even work or the pod itself won't work okay so if you have not used it try to use this it will work yeah right so um, yeah that's it for this particular video so in the next one i will be directly uh, diving into i'll go to the scripts firebase do like okay here i'll be di diving directly into expo a google sign in integration with the expo it will be a long video but it will be worth it so i'll do it back to back with the expo google and then bar react native google and then expo apple integration and bar react native apple integration right so it would be separate videos not the combined video with like how i did with expo and bar react native in this same video itself right the main objective of my, um, myself doing this is to showcase that there are two versions of react native one older version which is like the node sdk and then the um, uh, latest version like the web sdk and then there are other alternatives to firebase authentication like this right uh, it's yeah so that's that's my uh, so i'll see you in the next video